subscribe to our youtube channel and hit on bell icon to get the latest updates on qa automation side in this lecture let's talk about some resume tips which are most important to follow so i don't give you any points to add in your resume but i will give you some information like what needs to be done so that you know your resume gets shortlisted from the list of resumes what recruiter generally gets so these are the five points which you should remember when you create a resume so i'll quickly explain what are all these so the professional summary is the first thing which will show up when you open anyone's resume so let me show one sample resume and we will go through these points so i work for one consultancy to shortlist resumes not now somewhere i worked last year so they will send me around 40 to 50 resumes in a day and they will ask to me to shortlist two or three from those 40 resumes not only to me if you are already into any interview panel you might be experiencing this so recruiters will send lots of resumes when your manager opens a requirement on any position so all resumes will be flooded to your inbox so hardly anyone will open and read a resume for maximum of 15 to 20 seconds that's all trust me okay so if i get 40 resumes and hardly i'll spend five minutes to decide which is the good resume so how to create uh, that best and first impression when someone opens your resume they should able to shortlist you so initially you have to start with professional summary okay something like this so that describes your overall experience and the tools you have used in your total IT experience. Everything first you should describe in some points. So some people start with education table or some people directly start with project table. So that comes next. So first of all, you should provide some summary. What is it about? Okay. So most of the screening will be done by looking the first few points only. Right now, if we start looking at this resume, five years of experience, functional automation, performance, Selenium, API, one quick glance of what he has done, page object model, software testing like it. Okay, so by looking at this, the first impression is that, okay, this is like automation resume, right? So if you don't put any automation related things in your initial uh, summary, then that will be having negative effect. So I see most of the people will do a common mistake of writing their professional summary with lots of manual information. Okay, so ultimately you might do manual testing only once they recruit. Okay, that's different story. But to get shortlisted, they will specifically look for some automation. That's how uh, QA world is going on now. So if you don't mention all those points, the technical things, what you have done, and if you rely on these like software testing, lifecycle, system testing, and uh, STLC, these are all not required. Okay, so no one will look for software development, testing lifecycle, these full form strategies. Those are required, but for shortlist, there should be something special. Okay, cost saving, all these won't work. This one will work. Web driver, test ng, APM, API testing. Okay, somewhere we have seen framework development. So these points should get highlighted. So that way it sounds little technical and you will get first impression within few seconds, right? And next is they will directly come to your recent project. Okay. So generally though you have mentioned some 10, 20 projects in your resume, no one really cares. They hardly look at your current project, which you are working on because that's the recent and that will tell what responsibilities you are holding. And one more mistake I frequently see in almost all the resumes. So do not give much description about what your project does. Okay, no one really needs that information. I have seen recently one resume, I think two days ago. Description is like eight lines about that project. Why do we need what that project is about? If someone wants to recruit you, they will focus on what technical responsibilities you have handled and what QA responsibilities you have handled in that project because that is the recent one. Okay, so just give one line of description about the project and directly jump into responsibilities and make sure you provide proper technical responsibilities here 
and the one what you provide here should match with your professional summary okay so here if you mention selenium frameworks i did so many things but when you start reading your project responsibilities if you don't mention anything out there then where did you use all this professional experience this is overall summary of your resume right when you mention something here you have to make sure those are somewhere included in your project responsibilities so in this again if you mention complete manual you will last focus right so these are the two things people will observe in first 30 seconds trust me 30 seconds only at least i know few recruiters because um qa is like common resume right that hundreds of profiles people will get when they just open a requirement and one more thing so let's say you are applying for api testing so if the requirement is specifically on api testing so in your current project make sure you write more information about api testing okay if you write somewhere in the last project where you worked any 5 6 years ago no one will go to that extent and read all the responsibilities they hardly read first two projects what you mention here so based upon the requirement you are applying make sure those things are there in your first two projects so you worked or not no one will go and check in your project okay so they will just check if you are employee or not that's it so what responsibilities you have done all this no one really cares so based upon position you are applying you have to smartly tweak your project responsibilities so one should feel that you have handled project successfully with automation or even manual testing also you can proudly mention them as well but make sure you have a mix of both automation and manual right and that too in first two projects only so last 3 4 5th project you can still put manual or anything no one cares all right so please remember that and next when you talk about technical skills make sure you give all automation tools whatever you have knowledge here so this one row is like glance about what all tools you need right you have knowledge so you provide properly everything in this table and i see some resumes with hobbies no one needs that okay maybe people might ask when you actually go in for in person interview there people will check about your mindset by asking hobbies but to shortlist because there are middle recruiters who does shortlisting resumes they don't care what you do okay you might watch movies or you play cricket that doesn't matter so that might required when you are a fresher but if you are experienced uh, throw that all hobbies into trash and don't put any college project experience or mini project what you have done in your colleges if you are experienced you should not put everything about all what you have done in your college just mention your college name that's all okay so that will not help you instead if you have any certifications go ahead and put them that will give some additional uh, weightage okay so these are the points you have to remember and next if you have any linkedin url please provide here and make sure the summary of what you have in your linkedin profile page matches with the summary what you given your resume okay so people might can quickly go to that link and see uh, your activities or something like that so this shows like how open you are and how active you are in the testing world so you can add that link as well that gives uh, additional weightage but github links are not required trust me no one is going to look into your github code and see what's going there okay so you they will hardly spend 30 seconds or 1 minute on your resume and there will be no time to go to your github link okay so even if you write some professional code there you are actually setting expectation high to the recruiter okay so let's say there is one guy who will interview you okay so he will go through your github everything he will find out all the mistakes or if you done a great job there then he will come with the questions which are tougher than what you have given in your github link okay so why do you want to set any expectation to the person who is asking questions so let's not provide any code related things i know some people argue but in my personal experience this is my advice if you have any linkedin profile you can share that so that way you can showcase your social profile here and one last thing is a keywords so let's say they were looking for some automation resume some people do not have time to see this summary as well okay so if this resumes are given to some people who do not have a technical knowledge 
okay so if you if it is qa guy they will read and understand but the middle hr people or recruitment talent acquisition teams they don't know what is selenium right what all they do is control f selenium 1 2 3 4 5 6 good let's sort list this resume trust me things will go like this if resumes are being given to the person who do not have any knowledge so make sure you the keywords what you provide is in multiple places like in your experience summary in your projects in your technical skills okay don't write generic terms like i have automated um something like that because that is not a keyword right you can still write that but make sure you mention two names like selenium api testing automation that is also one keyword um now let's say api testing is a requirement right api testing you see that only one keyword you have mentioned in the experience summary and nowhere mentioned in the projects it's just in the summary here and it's not anywhere so you might not get shortlisted so that's where you have to do all this because you never know how the shortlisting happens if they have knowledge or not so based upon my experience so these are all key points which you have to consider okay so that's pretty much about this lecture take some time today and try to update your resume with whatever you have learned from this video and see if that makes any difference wishing you all the best thank you